we're here to protect you and the, and the ones that you love. It's a good feeling to know that our efforts aren't going unnoticed. It actually brought tears to my eyes to know that we have this support. You're welcome. I must just say, you're welcome. It's stressful, but we're not going anywhere. All right. Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Women's Track and Field Through the Decades. Tonight, we have a really special group for you. We have the pioneers of the women's track and field program. That's a decade of the 1970s at Bucknell. We've got some great alums joining us, joining head coach Kevin Donner and one of our current student athletes, Michaela Bracken. Michaela is a junior hurdler from Vintendale, Pennsylvania, and we're really glad that she's able to join us tonight. My name is Todd Newcomb, and I want to thank Geisinger as our sponsor for tonight's event. Geisinger has done a great job throughout the pandemic, and as always, they do a great job with our student athletes here at Bucknell day in and day out. So thank you to Geisinger. Let me introduce our guest and then I'll turn it over to Coach. Our first guest from the class of 1977 is Mimi Waldman. Mimi lettered in 77 as the only senior on the varsity's first team. She was also the team captain of that team. She graduated with outdoor school records in the 100 and 200 and is part of the school record 400 meter and 880 yard relay. Our next guest from the class of 1978 and I'm gonna introduce her by her uh, maiden name, that's probably the one you'll recognize most from Bucknell, is Suzanne Jardine. She was class of 78, she lettered in 1978. She was named the program's most improved member for the 1977-78 season. She graduated with the outdoor school record in the 440 yard dash, as well as part of four school record relay units. So coach, we've got a great group for us here tonight. We're gonna to get to hear some of the real secrets of the beginnings of the track program. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. You're on mute coach, I'll get you off mute there. All right, well, thank you Todd for the introduction there of our uh, the young ladies on here. And we're very excited to have uh, everybody here and um, looking forward to it. So first of all, uh, let's start with Mimi and uh, Tell us uh, what you've been doing since graduation. <laughs> well, um, I live in a very small town in Connecticut called Hebron. Um, famous coach for your, well, probably one of your, um, Chrissy Benzinski. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Yep. She is more our claim to fame than I am. <laughs> Ram High School. <laughs> That's right. All right. So Hebron is just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, being that I was kind of born and raised in this area and being that Hartford is the insurance capital of the world, um, I started my um, working career at Aetna. So I was at Aetna for uh, 18 years. And then uh, this new insurance company that was started out in Minnesota um, kind of was hiring. And so I transferred over there with my boss and I was there for 21 years and that was United Healthcare. So, uh, I've been on the ground floor of an awful lot of startups, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, so just retired three years ago. Um, my husband uh, and I try to travel, we ski, kayak, try to stay active. Um, that way my daughter still lives at home. She's 25 and she went to Lafayette. So, oh, really? Yes, we have a little bit of you know rivalry in the house periodically. Uh, that's all right, that's a good school too. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so That's me. All right. All right. And then uh, Suzanne, why don't you tell us uh, what's going on with um, what you've been doing and family, things like that. Uh, well, I graduated um, in uh, 1978 from Bucknell and absolutely loved Bucknell. Um, had a great time there. Um, and then I um, actually started working for Condé Nast Publication in New York City uh, for a year. And um, and then I got married and moved down to Washington DC with my husband and we lived there a few years. And then we finally went out to Denver, Colorado where I've been here since 1982. Um, love Denver. And um, I have uh, two children, Brian and Sarah. Um, Sarah went to University of Virginia and Brian went to Colgate where he uh, was captain of the lacrosse team and played a lot in the Patriot League. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, in fact, I was at uh, one of the games uh, at, in Lewisburg where um, where Colgate and Bucknell were 
duking it out on the lacrosse field. And uh, it was hard to hard to know who to root for. <laughs> oh, come on. It's your son. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but loyal. anyway, um, yeah, very loyal. But um, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, that's me. Um, you know, I've been uh, uh, working on and off and, and now I'm retired and, uh, and have four grandchildren, which is awesome. So <clears throat> tell you what, we have uh, quite a few alums that I coached in the last like 20 years that live in the Denver area. Really? And, uh, we were, I was supposed to have a coaching convention in Denver this past December and I was going to try to work up a, an alumni reception for all people from Colorado that were uh, members of the track and field and cross country team. So uh, I was ready to send that email out and find everybody. And it was all set. And then the coaching convention obviously got canceled due to COVID. So, right. I would have met you. So yeah, we're, we're supposed to be in Denver. Suzanne, yeah. You don't have any uh, plane parts in your front yard, do you? <laughs> No, thank goodness. That happened in Broomfield, uh, which is north of us, but uh, very scary. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> What's funny about Broomfield is the young lady that Mimi was talking about, Chrissy Budzinski, mm -hmm. that's where she lives right now in Broomfield, Colorado. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So she's uh, wow. engaged to another one of my runners, a guy named Luke Giuliano, and who went out to Colorado State for his grad school. And he utilized his last year of eligibility to run there that he, he got hurt here. And yeah, they're engaged, living in Broomfield, and they're supposed to get married Labor Day weekend of this coming year. So. Oh, that's I, great. I might, I might be out there anyway. Good. That'd be awesome. Well, I'll look Love you Love to up. meet you in person. Sure, <laughs> sure. All right, ladies. Well, let's go back to Mimi here and take us back to the beginning and tell us about recruiting process, how you got involved with the track and field program. I know you guys were in the beginning stages where recruiting is probably a lot different than it was than it is right now. And I'm sure Michaela will be interested to hear uh, about those experience. And why did you ultimately choose to go to Bucknell? Recruiting? Well, <laughs> Was it just funny. Putting, putting a sign up on the wall? <laughs> yeah, we, um, so let me take you back. This is real ancient history. So um, I came in the fall of 73 and my high school in West Hartford, Conard had had a very strong track team and we did really well. And I came to Bucknell and there was no women's track team. And I was shocked, you know, I don't know. I figured everybody had a women's track team. <laughs> so, um, I kind of asked around, I'm like, well, how do you get something started? I said, this is, you know, I can't imagine we don't have a team. And of course I knew that title line had just been passed. So I figured this was a good opportunity. Um, and I honestly think it was like a boyfriend of a girl on my hall group who ran on a track team. And what he told me is that there was a woman who was a resident director at Hunt Hall her name was Val Gervais. Yes, that's she the name. She was a grad student and she loved to run distance. And so she mm -hmm. would just run with the guys. It's like she would just go out and anytime they were doing road work, she ran with them. And so he said, I think the, probably the place to start would be talk to Val and see what she might say since she's a grad student and been around a while. So I did, you know, and I said, so how do you get a team started around here? <laughs> and, and she said, well, I would talk to Peg Bryan you know, the head of the women's athletics department and see if um, basically she would take you through and see if we can, they, we can get some sponsorship and kind of go from there. And so um, I no, we didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just this young whippersnapper, you know, but I, Peg was just wonderful. I mean, it was right at the time where she was, I think really looking, to, there were several programs that were looking to be started. Um, and so she was very interested in helping and um, she kind of did all the legwork behind the scenes uh, with the university, um, got us sponsorship. We had to be, and this was the hard part of the team was we had to be a club for two years before we could be recognized as a varsity team, which meant we had to hold it together for two years. <laughs> yeah, without coaches yourselves, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, but I remember going to um, Coleman, um, Hall because they had, I, I don't know whether it's the board of directors meeting, but it was the administration and the 
university. So I went there as this little freshman, you know, not knowing what I was doing there. And obviously I didn't have anything to say, but I was just, we were on the docket for approval and funding. And I mean, it just passed like without even a discussion, you know, it was like, yeah, you know, yeah, women's track, move along. Um, and so that was my freshman year. That was, I think the spring of 74. And there was nobody else around to be on the team that year. So I had to wait for the next group of kids to come in. Um, and that was Suzanne and that was uh, Amy Scaramuza, who was a sprinter and Daria Lynn. Um, and, and I, and Suzanne, I don't know if you, I don't know how I got the word out my sophomore year. I don't know whether I put stuff like on the bulletin board in the university center. I don't know. Do you know how you heard about the team? I'm not sure. Um, I re I'm so glad you mentioned Val because um, I believe it was my freshman year that she asked me to go out on a run with her. And, um, you know, I don't know if you were in that group or not, but um, I went out for a long run and I'm a, a sprinter, you know, 400 meter uh, event. And oh my gosh, I went out and I thought it was going to die afterwards. <laughs> I think we went out for four miles or something. But um, yeah, Val was the one who kind of got things going. And um, but, you know, it's kind of vague and fuzzy, but I know I know you were the mastermind kind of behind things. You were you were, a, a, you know, involved in a lot of the leadership. So I'm, I'm hoping you're going to fill in the gaps for me. So, <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, after after the school had approved all the stuff then I, I know Peg must have talked to Coach Golden behind the scenes because I did not touch talk to him cold. But I had to go in and meet with him that first time and <clears throat> convince him that sponsoring a woman's team was a good thing because the women's program didn't have a coach. So yeah. if he didn't sponsor us, then we had no team. And um, I, I really only want to track. That's what I was for. And, and that's when I, I mentioned earlier that he said, I, I'm not interested in just, uh, you know, sponsoring a track team. If you want a team, you, you have to feel the cross country team, too. Um, and so that's what we agreed to. And um, it, it made it difficult. I mean, we had, so that first year it was like just maybe a half a dozen of us and then word got out. And then, you know, by my junior year, we had a few more and a few more after that. But that's when I was telling you earlier that with cross country and I think on the, the women's cross country Zoom session, they said that they had to poach people from the track team. That was the situation. We didn't have enough fun to, you know, enough people to run a full cross country um, squad. <laughs> and so. So what we were trying to survive, that's all we had to do is get through those first two years, make sure that we had women showing up. We did have meets. Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember where the coach actually got us in meets my first year, the, the 74, 75 year, but we definitely had meets and races uh, my junior mm -hmm. and senior year. Um, yeah. And the rest is history after that. Um, and then, like I said, coach, so coach was with us until the fall of my senior year and then John Larner took over. And then that next fall, the women's department had hired a full-time female coach. So then they, from then on in, you guys are what you are now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was great too. I remember her, um, Diane, Diane Perry, I guess yeah. it is. Yeah, she was awesome. She had a wicked Boston accent, I remember. Yeah. She would say, ah, oh, you go out and run a quarter, a quarter mile, <laughs> Suzanne. <You know? laughs> but um, it was really wonderful once we got that woman coach because you know things just sort of solidified then and became became just just more just a lot better for the team yeah, yeah. a lot better <laughs> i mean right. it was hard I, I don't i don't think coach golden knew too much what to do with us um so but anyway um really enjoyed the time there uh, immensely it was a lot of fun so coach before you get to the next question i'm going to jump in and introduce our guest that just joined us, and that's Allison Baytop. Allison was class of 81 at Bucknell. She was a three-year letter winner for the Bison, and at one point, she held the school records in both the indoor and outdoor shot put, as well as part of three relay units. So Allison, welcome to the call. And coach, maybe we wanna go back and uh, ask Allison that first question. Sure thing. Uh, welcome, Allison. I'm Coach Donner, the present track and field and cross country coach for the men and women. We welcome you to the call here. Thank you. But um, your two uh, former teammates, uh, the, what I did is I asked them, uh, before we begin, begin start sharing memories, uh, update us on your personal life, uh, what you've been doing since graduation, family, things like that. Um, 
Well, I live in Silver Spring, Maryland, and this is actually my hometown. Um, I always said I wanted to live somewhere else, specifically warm weather, and um, never got there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Um, I currently, what am I doing now? I'm um, trying to keep my cat from eating my food. <laughs> uh, she's a mess. Uh, can you hold on one second? She's going to be a cat. No, no. no. <laughs> We get all kinds of interruptions. <laughs> Kids, spouses. That's, that's what I have to do when, because um, currently I'm teaching um, at a, at the Lab School of Washington. It's a school for, um, it's a K through 12, actually it's first grade through 12 for kids with learning differences. Um, I work with junior high. Um, I've been there for 12 years. Um, I coach basketball, the boys basketball team. I did coach girls for a while, but girls cry too much. <laughs> so I coach the boys junior high basketball team um, and I coach cross country and track uh, for both right. junior high and high school um, so prior I'd to I'd like to hear that yeah that's fun um, prior to that I, I did uh, I'm a massage therapist also so I graduated with a degree in biology with um when I got to Bucknell, all intentions of going to medical school. But while I was there, I was like, nah, I really don't like sick people, you know? So <laughs> I was like, nah, that's really not what I do. So I didn't change my major, but you know, trying to figure out well, what, you know, what can I do with a biology major? And um, so, you know, becoming a, I did a whole bunch of other things, but eventually uh, massage was like the perfect thing. And then okay. I just wound up teaching. So I taught massage yeah. more than actually doing it. Um, I still have a practice, although I have not touched anybody since COVID. Um, I put my table away and I'll pick it up one day. I don't know. Um, but you know, currently I'm teaching, like I said, um, science um, and virtually, which is so much fun. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm enjoying life, right? Trying I'm trying to try, trying to stay focused and and positive and all that kind of stuff. So great. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Suzanne and Suzanne. Why don't you tell us how you ended up at Bucknell and how you ended up on the track and field team? Well, um, we had there were a number of people from my high school that had gone to Bucknell. And um, the guidance counselor at, um, at my high school uh, had gone to Lafayette and he was very, very positive about all those Pennsylvania schools. So um, I went to visit Bucknell and just fell in love with it. Um, and uh, I ended up um, going to the admissions, you know, for their interview and just asking like Mimi, you know, do you have a track team? Do you have a woman's track team? And they said, no but um, you could start one. So um, I said, okay, great. So, um, but I, you know, I loved it. I loved uh, track particularly. And um, because of the passage of Title IX, um, Rumson Fairhaven, which was where I went to, uh, to high school, um, they had started a girls track team uh, my junior and senior year. And uh, we just had a blast, uh, loved it. Uh, I was pretty much the 400 it was it started out as a 440 yard run and then it evolved into a 400 meter dash <laughs> and um I love that race um they were trying to get me to to maybe do a half mile and I wasn't real excited about that but anyway um so um loved Bucknell and um you know went into it and as Mimi said it was <clears throat> It was a little, you know, hard that first year, uh, you know, so I was there in 1974, fall of 1974. They're just, you know, just, it didn't really get started. I don't think um, until 76, you know, 77. And as, as, as Mimi said, um, uh, Coach Goulden uh, was very kind to help, kind of help us along there. And his assistant, John Larner was, um, was very, very, good at 
getting us together, but it wasn't really until, um, you know, we got the women's coach in there that, that things really moved along. Um, they did try to get us to do cross country. I think that was uh, Coach Goulin's uh, big thing. And I think I did do one cross country Matt, <laughs> and uh, it, it was quite an experience. I can't remember what college it was at, but there were some big hills. And, um, but anyway, that was that's my story there. So, all right. And uh, Allison, what attracted you to Bucknell, and uh, how'd you end up on the track and field team? Um, honestly, um, you know, when you're junior, senior, and you get all the the I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm not new. Okay. You get all the um, information from colleges and stuff. And I was throwing Bucknell stuff in the trash, honestly. <laughs> until, <laughs> until a friend of mine, a, uh, who also was the um, same class as me, he was like, I've been getting this stuff from Bucknell. You? Yeah. I said, me too. So we both ran track in high school. I was primarily a basketball player. Um, um, and I ran track. I'm just gonna be real. I ran track because the guy he was cute, and I was trying to be on the basketball <laughs> team with him. So, um, anyway, long story short, um, we went up to we visited Bucknell. I, I wound up applying. We both, you know, um, were accepted. Um, I came up for Black Arts Festival back in the day, and a prospective um, black freshman would come up. I fell in love. I just remember riding up 15 and cresting that hill and Bucknell kind of lays out there and I was like oh my god it was one of the prettiest things I've ever seen um, to this day um, the only other campus that I've seen that rivals it is Pepperdine um, but um, it was just it's just a, it was a beautiful place so we both said we were going to go I came home told my parents and I said that's where I want to go they you know uh put the money in all that kind of stuff and my friend wound up not going <laughs> <laughs> so i was stuck um yeah and again being honest that you know um i was on a call yesterday with um some fellow black alumni and um actually we were it was it was four of us in my class but everybody else was like in the you know early seventies and mid, mid to late seventies and stuff. So we were the young ones on on the call. But I did not have the best experience at Bucknell. Um, uh, as the years went on, the yucky feeling kind of you know dissipated, um, and I was talking to. Um, my ex roommate and just telling her that you know what I, I had gone it took me a while to go back to Bucknell um, I swore when I graduated I would never go to this, you know step foot in the state of Pennsylvania again um, and I had family in Philly and I was, I was like I don't care I'm never going back to Pennsylvania <laughs> um, it was just really hard in the early, late 70s you know um, um, and I, I kind of feel bad because I did go eventually, I eventually went back and I apologized to some of whoever, the students that were there because I remember when um, people would graduate and it felt like they were abandoning us. You know, being black on the camp, on, on Bucknell's campus in the late seventies wasn't the coolest thing to be. You know, you weren't, um, there was no real overt racism you just weren't there, you know, and um, had to fight for everything, you know, um, and it just it just was not the, a pleasant place to be. And but I, my parents didn't want me to transfer, so I would like I said I was literally stuck. So I said, "Fine, I'll finish it out." And, um, but going back, I feel really bad that I did not. I did what I thought. Other people did with the seniors and stuff. Graduating seniors did. They, they when you leave, you just swear to never come back again. But that doesn't help because when I started coming back to campus, and most recently I was there, what two years ago, and um, was that forty years later almost, and I'm still hearing the same um, experiences 
that black students are having on campus that I had. And I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, this is ridiculous. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm getting re-energized to, to go when all this mess is over, to go back and um, to help out so, so the kids don't have to, because what's funny is I'm like, these are, these are my children. I'm like, I don't have any children. Um, and I forget how old I am sometimes. Um, and um, the kids that are in college now are old enough to be my children and some of them grandchildren. Ooh, it's scary. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I, I can't let them have the same experience that I did. Mm. So um, I'm, I'm re-motivating myself to, to get back into um, the alumni, going back to campus, you know, doing what I can to support the, um, the students. Um, yeah. But, I, you know, track was a, honestly, was one of the highlights. Um, and I, I enjoyed it. Um, I do remember Coach Diane, I used to, I threw the shot, and my, um, now hopefully my roommate's going to be joining us, um, Ellen Michelle Brown. But um, she used to <laughs> throw the shot 40 times. And we like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? So, oh my God. Oh, throw the shot 40 times. Oh, okay. Oh my God. But yeah, her accent was a mess. It was I know. Crazy. I know. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I initially um, wanted to play basketball, but um, my freshman year, I had to have surgery. And when I came back for my sophomore year, um, to be honest, the coach, I, I don't even remember the basketball coach's name, but um, there was a rumor that she only had one black player on the team at the time, and it was already a black player. So I was like right at the edge. Um, and I was a pretty good basketball player. So, but I didn't make the team. And Coach Diane was pissed that I went out for the team. So when I told her that, you know, I'm, I decided to do track. <laughs> <laughs> so what events did you do huh what events did you do i did by the time i graduated i had done every event there was my oh, really i was laughing with my, my roommate yesterday i was telling us do you remember my la very last event outdoor was the uh, mile and i decided to do that because i had done everything else and I figure I run, you know, miles for warm-ups. I we run five miles. I can do that. Oh my God. <laughs> On the third lap, no, second <laughs> lap. I, had, I told her, I said, stand um, um like the back corner and just kind of chill. I told her everything to say to me. And I came around that corner and she said, Come on, keep get your knees up, keep going, pump your arms. I told her, shut up. <laughs> Right in the middle of the race. In the middle of the race. I said, shut up. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Um, but my main events were long jump, shot put, and relays. Um, um, but I, I did the javelin. I did the discus. Um, I ran the 60, the 100, 200, 400, the half. It was That was an indoor event. It was a relay. Was, we need somebody to run the two-mile relay. And Allison, you want to do it? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> That's the race for real women, I tell you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's your name? Um, John's iPad? He says John. Oh, Suzanne. Suzanne, yeah. When you said running the half, I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I right. know. I know. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, that, that was, you know, field events and relays was my. Um, All right. Well, I'll do one more question before we let Michaela ask a question. Uh, but we'll go back to Mimi. And Mimi, what was your most memorable experience as a part of the Bucknell Track and Field program? Well, I, I spent some time thinking about this. And uh, so, you know, recognize at the time, we were a loose group. I mean, it was not too many of us. Um, we did have some meets. There were some smaller meets. But the one I remember is Coach actually had us entered in Penn Relays. And I think that was in 76. And showing up there and seeing oh. 
the size of that thing that I, I was so intimidated <laughs> <laughs> um, between the clubs, the high schools, you know, we had our little Bucknell orange uh, t-shirts. Those were our uniforms. We finally got t-shirts my junior year. So bright orange t-shirts is at Bucknell and all I could think was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? <laughs> Um, but it, it was it was frightening, but it was absolutely wonderful because to this day, I just I remember that feeling because I it was we didn't do very well, as I recall. But honestly, just the experience of having been there um, was right. was probably the highlight, the, one of the lowlights of my memories. <laughs> I was telling you was was when we were for, you know, again, I was 100 to 20. Um, and when we had to run cross country, I can remember it was parents weekend. And I don't remember it was sophomore or junior year, but. I told my parents, and it was at home, and I told my parents, don't come to the race, because they're used to me in high school, like winning, so that's what they thought in their head, and I said, please don't come to the race, stay at the Bison, um, I will come there after the race, and of course, my father didn't believe me, um, and so they drove across 15, and coincidentally, they happened to come, I was just coming in, because the end of the race at that point was over by the mods, you know, yeah. so we came in off the golf course there and then, you know, came down the road and then took, took a left and we went in there. And so they happened to cross 15 in their car just as I was coming through. And apparently the look on my face and my body situation was such, my father kept right on driving. <laughs> 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 and sure enough, I met him at the bison later on the day and he said, well, uh... <laughs> I said, enough said, we're not going to go there anymore. But that, so that was kind of low light. So running the cross country was not my best, but I certainly, some of the meets, uh, um, you know, I think at the Penn Relays, like PAL was there, the Police Auxiliary League was there, the Adams uh, track the Adam, was there. Yeah. And here were we, Little Buck now. So gotcha. That was a highlight. Suzanne, your most memorable experience in the track and field? Uh, well, I, you know, and I, now that Mimi mentions that, that was pretty frightening. Um, there were just a ton of people there at the, um, the relays, uh, fill, fill relays. Um, but I, I just remember um, going to Beaver Stadium, Penn State, and uh, we had a meet there. And I just remember just these women that um, were just so accomplished. Um, and they, they ran the 400 meters and say, 57 seconds or something. And, um, you know, I, I just couldn't quite get there for that, but, um, I can remember just being just awed by it. Um, but, um, that was, that was one of my memories, um, you know, do, there, um, it was just, just to be with a company of women that were so accomplished like that. It was, it was, a it was, it was great. It was really fun. Awesome. And Allison, your most memorable uh, experience was a member of the track and field program. Um, well, I have a couple of two of them actually. My ve my very first meet was at um, SUNY Binghamton, um, and it was in March. And you know what happens in March up there? It snowed, <laughs> <laughs> and we kept saying, "Are we really going to have the meet? Are we really going to have the meet?" And yeah, we had to meet in the snow. I was like, oh my, outdoor. I was like, oh my God. But um, yeah, that was probably the most, the most miserable I ever felt. <laughs> um, but I think my other one was, um, um, it was a meet at uh, University of Pittsburgh. It was an indoor meet. And that's where I ran the half and um, at that, that relay. And I did pretty good in the um, in long jump. Um, but just running that half was was like, <laughs> yeah, it made a woman out of me. <laughs> right. Yeah, awesome. awesome. I have I have great appreciation for anybody who runs that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Michaela has some questions for uh, you guys. Yeah. Um. So it sounds like you guys kind of were the jump start of women's track and field at Bucknell, which is super cool. Um, so your experience is obviously a lot different than mine and my teammates are right now. But um, I guess what advice would you have for us and the current athletes that are here right now on, I guess, what to expect in a Bucknell track and field experience? And like, looking back, what can you say about like the overall experience of the team? Go. I didn't. I don't uh, want to talk. Oh, yeah. As a as a 
Oh, I go think ahead. From, go for our experience, I mean, it was just um, grit. You know, I mean, it's um, especially in a woman's sport. I mean, there there is something to be said for making a statement and, and being strong. Um, and if that's what you can focus on, and um, I think later on, you know, you're going to ask of things about, you know, who was most important and stuff. And, um, you know, I, I mean, sure, you're, you're the tightness of your team. I'm sure you've already felt that and how supportive they are. Um, I don't know as I, well, of course, during our era, if we didn't have everybody showing up, we wouldn't have had a team at all. So team for us was extremely important. And I know, I mean, I'm not saying anything you don't already know. I mean, reliance on your team members um, is, will get you through everything. As a coach, looking back, um, it, it, I think it really helped me under, understand, because I also coached um, summer league track. And those are, those are some serious athletes. You talk about pen relays and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, but um, some very superior athletes. Um, but always just keep, just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Um, know your body, though. Know your limits. And, um, you know, one of the things that I don't, I don't know, um, is there a female coach or are you the coach for everybody, uh, Coach Donner? I direct everybody. I do have uh, some female assistants. Okay. Um, so I, I kind of, when I came in, I kind of heard, you know, some comments about good old Coach Golden. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it, was a good, it was a good thing that we got, you know, got our own coach because uh, he he didn't want us to talk. He didn't want us to share the track, <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah, stand, you know, stand up for, you know, female athletes and, and, and do what you do. Um, and it is, it's about a team. And un even though it's individual events, you still are a team. And um it's, I think track is probably, I don't know, it's, it's one of the, one of the, what I like to tell the parent, when we have parent, um, when we have our end of the season kind of um, events and gala and stuff and award ceremony, I always say, you know, track is a sport that you run around circle going nowhere fast. <laughs> you know, and the kids will say, what are we doing today, coach? And we're running. <laughs> <laughs> But you're right. And you run until, you know, and I would track the season doesn't start until the first person throws up, you know? So, you know, and, and it, it's just hard. There's no baskets that you can see that we go through. There's no goals. It's just hard. And it pays off in the end. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I like that. Hats, hats off to every track person. Anybody's ever done track. Hats off. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What about you, Suzanne? Um, yeah, I would, I would just agree with um, what everyone has said. Um, I think it's important too to, um, you know, to, to push yourself and to get better. And it's the only sport where you can really kind of, you have your um, benchmarks, like, you know, this is what I ran it in, you know, yesterday and now and today or this week, I'm going to run it faster and better. And and, um, you know, you rely on your teammates to kind of push you too. And, um, and, and also I would enjoy the experience because um, gosh, you know, it's been 40 years now and I can't remember a lot of it, but and please enjoy it and enjoy those people that you're, you're out there with because um, they're your, they're your buds, you know, and, um, and it's an awesome, it's an awesome experience to be part of a team. It really is. It's great. And good luck to you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. What are your events? What do you run? What do you do? Um, I'm a little bit like you, sort of. I um I'm a pentathlon or pentathlete. So I do I came in as a hurdler and high jumper and kind of a sprinter. Um and now sort of do some throws, some jumps, you know, whatever I need to do. But yeah, so mostly like the five events in the pentathlon. So hurdles, high jump, long jump, shot in the eight hundred. So wow. They, it's a they, fun, it's fun little mix. They had just started that when I, um, by the time I was a senior, and I had already run the half, and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I don't blame you. 
<laughs> so do yeah. your meets uh do your meets start next weekend or um i mean are you allowed to to compete next weekend we are on a present pause for athletics right now uh we've had our first two meets um canceled uh due to the pause and they're going to be making a decision pretty soon about our meet this weekend and uh but we do have a full outdoor season scheduled. Uh, we didn't have a full indoor season scheduled. That was by design uh, because mm -hmm. of COVID. But uh, we're hoping that we can at least get a meet in this weekend to at least uh, bust the rust and hopefully have a full outdoor season. That, that's what our goal is right now. Has it been hard coaching through this, um, you know, to keep everybody active and on it you know well yes and no uh, we have a pretty motivated team we have some great leadership uh, we were allowed to practice during the fall uh, for about six weeks and then we started this you know the semester late this year that was by design from the upper administration to start in February for the semester rather than January and then uh, we had about a week of practice and then there were some cases on campus and we took the caution cautious uh, attitude and decided to put, go on pause. We've been on pause for about two weeks now. Uh, where we're not allowed to officially practice, but we have that great indoor facility. Our kids are still going to there. I see them on their own and working out on their own. We have some great leadership and Michaela is a great leader herself. And uh, we have some pretty motivated kids. So even though we're not practicing as a team, I see the majority of my team out there working out on their own. And it's nice having that indoor facility because, you know, uh, we do have snow here right now. Yeah. And uh, we that, have our own. Uh, boy, you know, I, wish we had, I wish we had that facility when, when we were there. I think it, I think they just started building it my senior year, I think. Sure. I don't know, Mimi, do you remember that? I mean, oh my gosh, I would have killed for that. That was an awesome facility. I remember being we're, so jealous going, oh yeah. my gosh, <laughs> five years later, yes. Uh, yeah. We got it was nice. It was nice. And it even oh, you were part of the yep, yep. You were part of when it when it was built mm -hmm. there. And even cool. the outdoor track at the stadium was a cinder track at that yep. point. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty nice also. We're we're pretty spoiled there, Michaela. So uh, I'd say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah, I, I think I you think ladies will be happy to hear that the women outnumber the men. Uh, do any of you want to guess how many ladies are on my roster right now? 85. <laughs> Matt, you are exactly on. Really? Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> we started the year with 90. we had a few kids that uh, opted out or went remote and we're, we have 85 active roster members on the one. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Yay. That's great. <laughs> we have about Yay. 65 men, about 65 men. So, yeah. yeah. Good. So I figured you would enjoy hearing that. Yes, I do. All that's right, perfect. let's do another question here. Let's go to Mimi. Uh, Mimi, who was the teammate that you most admired and why? You know, um, I was also thinking about this question. And honestly, um, because our situation was so unique, I wouldn't pick any one person out. I would just have to say, um, the, the, I mean, Suzanne, Amy, Daria, I mean, Mary Rorig, you know, the next year, Sue Clazell, those guys. I mean, the fact that we had women who were willing to come out and practice, even if we didn't have competition, they were just coming out to run. And it took, like the word I used earlier, grit. I mean, it took grit to keep doing this um, at a time where it was really hard. So honestly, it, uh, the whole everybody all the women that came out that were willing to do this and put themselves out there when things weren't before recruiting before all the stuff you know before uh shoes before uniforms before <laughs> warm-ups um, <laughs> it's just it was a it was a great group of women you know and they they exemplified what a track person is all about the kind of heart that uh that goes into the a competitor like that um, i'm very proud of those women because honestly it was not an easy time, and boy, 85 women later, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep, we have uh, 85, uh, about uh, 28 of them are members of the cross-country team, and then we have about another seven or eight ladies that are 
middle distance runners that aren't on the cross country team. And then we, the rest are sprinters, hurdlers, jumpers, pole vault, multi, you know, things like that. So it's a pretty balanced program. That's great. Allison, anybody that you admired, then why? Um, there was a young lady who came. Um, I'm trying to remember if she was one year or two years behind me, but Beth Biddle. Um, who she 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 broke my record. <laughs> I was like, damn it. But she was so humble. I mean she was a she was a, a, a big girl. She was a big girl. And um when I saw her, I was like, okay. <laughs> but um she, you know, she asked questions, she, you know, was like, how do I do this and how can I be better? And the, so I was kind of like her junior coach. Um, while, while I was still there. But I guess my other one was um, uh, Cheryl Garth, who was supposed to be on this call. Um, we ran all four years together and we were, she was the lead off leg in the four by one and I was leg number two. And by our, we our handoffs, I mean, we, we did, we stopped practicing after probably our sophomore year because it was just always on. And that was always great, to, you know, it was, it was just perfect. And we, every time, we didn't always win, but um, it was just a great connection, you know. And um, people used to call me, so that was a great handoff. We were like, yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that was, that was always fun. That was good. Well, we, we have our share of handoff issues, so I'm, I'm a little jealous there. So. You need a coach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to coach them better. So, all right, Suzanne, uh, anybody you admired and why? Uh, you know, I, I would just have to echo um, Mimi's comments. Um, you know, they, they were just the us, we women, you know, Amy, Mimi, myself, Daria, and Mary Rorig. I mean, these, these were the women that I saw all the time. And we, we worked hard, and I just loved all those gals and um you know that was it for me i, I can't I, although mimi i've got to say it was wicked fast i mean she really ran a very um quick hundred i'll say and it was a pleasure to watch her um so but anyway i just enjoyed um meeting all those women and um you know admired them and and i don't know if i can really pick out any one person so all right Michaela, why don't you go next? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess from like a student athlete perspective here, um, what advice do you guys have about networking and finding the right job after Bucknell? Um, I know we had uh, one of the captains and then also Coach Donner set up a um, an alumni, a more recent alumni uh, networking Zoom call last week that was super helpful um, for some of the athletes that got to talk to people with different majors and got to see where they were at after Bucknell. Um, but I guess as kind of a different generation, what would you guys say that like helped you with, you know, networking after Bucknell? Did you like talk to other student athletes, other Bucknell students as a whole that weren't athletes? Yeah, just kind of like what was your experience with that? Mimi, you can start if you want to. Um, okay, so you're right. We are a different era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and networking wasn't so big <laughs> um, at my time. So unfortunately, um, I can't really speak to the networking part of your question. Um, you know, like I said, I grew up outside of Hartford, so it was just kind of a natural thing. The biggest companies in, you know, Hartford were insurance companies, and that's where I applied, and it was an easy thing getting jobs back then. But um, what I would tell you, though, is having been a hiring manager for many years, uh, um, when you do find something, the, the things that differentiated an applicant when they came to see me was um, the time they spent really researching my company um, and the job that I, you know, had an opening for, um, and then came in prepared to talk about what they could bring to that job, like how they could add value specifically, what their strengths were, what their experiences were, you know, do a crosswalk specifically. Um, Cause a lot of people just come in and honestly, I swear to God, they said, I wanted to say like, did you even read the posting? Like, or are you just doing like a shotgun approach and just applying to anything, you know? 
Um, they weren't in my office too long after that. Um, but do your homework, you know, about the company and the and the position. Sometimes it's hard because the postings, you know, especially the online stuff, you know, it's again somewhat abbreviated, and you can only do your best. But um, but make make it make sure that they understand how you can fit into their their job. Because honestly, I would stack rank my my applicants, and um, sometimes even if they didn't actually have the greatest answer, if they showed me that they had shown the greatest interest and were willing to put in, you know, more than just ah, oh, well, I applied for the job. Um, they would get ranked higher in, in my assessment. So, awesome. I'm sorry. Not a networker. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's that's definitely important to know for sure. I think I talked about that too on that call last week that do your research on the companies. Mm -hmm. That's big. When I interview people for assistant coaches, uh, I want them to know about my team and you can get on our website and learn everything about our team and that's to your homework, yeah. Some some people, believe it or not, don't do it. It's amazing. It's amazing yeah. how many people don't do it. I mean, I would honestly would be shocked. I was it's it's, right at their disposal. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would also um, venture that there are a lot of um, clubs in a lot of these Bucknell clubs in a lot of these cities. Um, I know Denver has um, uh, alumni, you know, alumni club. And there are, there are events that they um, have uh, from time to time. So um, I was really happy to see that, that um, there were a lot more people out here in Denver that had gone to Bucknell. Um, because, you know, I've, I've been around, you know, I was in D Washington, D.C. And, and then Denver. And, you know, in the beginning, a lot of people didn't know where Bucknell was or, you know. Um, but now, um, I think that's not the case. And um, there are a lot more people around um, in different cities across the country that, that have gone to Bucknell and, and I think would help you. Um, and I just think it's, it's, it's a lot better than it was when, when Mimi and I were going through it because um, there would just wasn't the alumni uh, connection there, really. You know? um, so I'm glad that that has changed, really. I think I would agree. Um, utilize all the clubs, utilize all the networks, but you're not going to keep, you might get a job because of who you know, but you're not going to keep it. So make, make sure, you know, you, you do your homework and you, you do the work. Right. You know? So, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'd talk. I remember I used to tell people I went to Bucknell. Oh, they, they, they thought it was Cornell. Up in New York, though. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, what I call it, in the middle of nowhere next to nothing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. What's your major? One more, one more question before we uh, turn it <laughs> off here. Uh, believe it or not, this is my 20th year as the head coach of the track and field and cross country program. And uh, as alums who kind of got this program rolling, what kind of advice would you give me as the, the current head coach? And just an FYI, I have used some of the advice that the cross country uh, by, uh, by the decades videos went. I, I've used some of it. So Mimi, what kind of advice would you give me as head coach? Um. I mean, I, obviously, I do not think that I am qualified to um, give you advice like that. I want to hear. I want to hear. Uh, hey. But I will tell you the one thing that I think was was most meaningful to me, and both in track and also in my corporate history, working for bosses. Um, and the word is respect. Um, respect your runners. Respect your athletes. Um, they should respect you. If it goes both ways, like it, like I said, even in my corporate world, um, I personally have always worked much better and much harder for somebody that I respected. Um, you know, I mean, there's nothing worse than you know you're doing the job and your and you know that your boss could never fill your shoes. You know, you're working hard or whatever, and they're not engaged or whatever. I mean, fortunately, I was lucky in my career. I worked for a lot of wonderful people, um, but again, personally, I know I Coach Golden might have been a really tough individual, but I respected him as a coach very much. Um, and so it, but it does need to be a two-way street. And I'm not saying that you are not, but that is the biggest war. As long as you respect your athletes, 
um, and all the foibles that come with them, <laughs> um, I think you can do nothing but win. Great. Thank you. Suzanne, any advice for uh, coach here? <laughs> That's a tough one. I, I really don't know, except um, maybe know your player's limitations too. I, um, I sometimes worry that um, people stress, stress their bodies a lot and get injured. And I hate seeing that. So um, just be aware, you know, I'm sure you are uh, aware of, of that and, um, you know, make sure people don't go, you know, damage their bodies too much, but because I know that can, that could happen. Um, so that's All my right. advice. Well, with 85 ladies, we can just crush them. Don't we, Michaela? <laughs> only, only a strong survivor. We, we just crush them and see what sticks. And then we go win. Not, I'm just kidding. I am just kidding. <laughs> Stop love. <laughs> yeah. Todd's going, this is recorded, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I am just kidding. So, I think we do a pretty good job of uh, balancing workouts and uh, stand on the mental side too with, with them. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. Do we, Michaela? I was just going to say, yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. good. That's good. <laughs> uh, Allison, any advice for me as head coach? Um. Well, I think the fact that you've been there for 20 years speaks volumes. Yeah, they haven't gotten rid of me yet. That's, hey, you're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess that I just recently did the um, U.S. Track and Field Association, USA, USA Track and Field Level 1 Coaching Certification. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Level 1, Level 2. That's good stuff. Yeah, um, that was crazy. Um, <laughs> um not that I don't know everything, but I, I've, I've been coaching probably probably for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And um, it kind of just uh, affirmed what I had been doing. So, you know, I learned a few new things. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. But basically, you know, the way I coach um, – is way what they said. Now they could be wrong, <laughs> but you know, probably not. Um, but I guess the one thing that I is most important to me as a coach is to develop the people, the kids, the students, the athletes, um, as as people first. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, your longevity speaks to you. That's what you're probably doing. Because um, if you weren't, you, you know, yeah. you wouldn't be there that for 20 years. Um, and I just remember seeing, I've been seeing your name for a while. So uh, I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, and right. then, yeah, just, 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 you know, coaching the people, the, the, the people first and then the athlete second. Good. Well, thank you. Michaela, what kind of advice would you give me as head coach? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, Coach Donner. You, you're a great coach. What can I say? <laughs> Echoing, I guess, everything that they've been saying. Um, yeah, I think come you. Really come on, there's something you want me to do that I haven't done. Come on. Huh? Let's see. Maybe take out the 800 and the pentathlon. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 don't <laughs> control, <laughs> I don't control that. <laughs> Remember, no, I, that makes you a woman. That's the woman. <laughs> there you go, Michaela. There's your challenge. That's right. Um, I was gonna. I appreciate how you um you know you know you have a huge team, 85 girls, 65 men. I appreciate how you take the time to you know talk to people outside of you know you coach the distance people and the middies. And I I think it's cool that like I started my freshman year, you know I saw you at my uh, well my senior year of high school. I saw you at one of my cross country races, and I was like, wow, he's like not even my main event coach, but. You know, my head coach came and, you know, watched me, supported me, um, which I think is really cool that, like, you have a relationship with people spanning um, all of the different event groups, which I think is a really good quality. Yeah, I try to do that. You know, we're yeah. a team. We, uh, we utilize the term one umbrella uh, between the men, the women, the sprinters, hurdlers, jumpers, throwers, mid-distance, long-distance, multi-pole vault. Uh, we use the term one umbrella. And I think um, 
I think that's really important to uh, our, our program. Yeah, it's a, it's a track team. It's not a sprinter's team. It's not a long jumper's team. Track and field, yeah. It's a track and field team. So, yeah. Absolutely. All right. So Todd, it's all you. All right, Kev. Well, thank you. I'm going to start my closing comments with uh, talking with Michaela first. And Michaela, again, thank you for taking the time out to be with us tonight. And uh, I hope you learned some great stuff to take back to the team. And we are going to keep our fingers crossed that you guys get mm -hmm. season in this, this spring. And you're out on that track behind me doing some damage. So good luck to you and your teammates. And thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And then to our alums, thank you so much for what you did to really get the women's track and field program started at Bucknell. Um, that can't be overstated enough or understated. It's it's so important what you've done. And uh, to, to now hopefully see what, what's happening now with the program is, as you look at it and you hear from Coach that there are 85 women in the program, you can see how far it's come. And, and that really is a lot of that is because of what you guys did to lay that groundwork. So thank you for that. And then also thank you for what you've done since you graduated from Bucknell. I talk to people all the time in our program, our donors, our alumni, our parents, our friends, and we cannot do or provide the opportunity for 85 women that we do without the support of our alumni. So thank you for what you do for the Spike Shoe program. And for those of you tonight that tuned in at home to watch, we thank you for doing so and go Bison. <laughs>